Now that we've dealt with basic equations where the variable only has a power of 1, we can move on and deal with more complicated equations where our variable could have a higher power, a power of 2 or even larger. In order to do so, we have to bring back in our factoring knowledge, and we're also bringing in a very specific and special multiplication situation. If we multiply two things together and get zero, then that means that one of those two factors has to be zero. Well, that gives us a very special situation that we can use in order to solve equations, provided that we can get all of our terms on one side so that we have equal zero, and that the resulting expression can be factored. If that's the case, then that means that we can take each factor and set it equal to zero so that we have created a collection of smaller equations to solve, smaller and arguably shorter, simpler equations to solve. So in this particular first example, we already have the equals zero, and to boot, we already have everything factored. So that means that we're starting at step three, where we set each factor equal to zero. Well, the two doesn't help us, but x could be equal to zero. The x minus one factor could be equal to zero, meaning that x would be equal to one. Or, lastly, the x plus 5 factor could be equal to 0, meaning that x would be equal to negative 5. So in this particular equation, we appear to be getting three solutions. If we follow the recommendation of step 4 and check each of those, we will find that each one of them will, in fact, work. So this is the goal that we have anytime we see a more complicated equation, such as... x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. The first step indicated that we needed to have the equal 0, which we already have. The second step indicated that we would need to factor, which I've already done for you. Using the AC method, we have the factors x minus 6 and x plus 2. The third step again tells us that we take each factor and set it equal to 0. So x minus 6 is equal to 0 gives us x equals 6, and x plus 2 equals 0, gives us x equals negative 2. If we take the time and trouble to check these by going back to our original equation, if we plug in a 6 for x, 6 squared minus 4 times 6 minus 12, 36 minus 24 minus 12 will equal 0, so x equals 6 does in fact work. If we plug in the negative 2, well, we need to be careful with that power. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. 4 plus 8 minus 12 will equal 0. And so we, in fact, have a second solution in this particular equation. x equals negative 2. So now we have, through this particular method, the possibility of getting more than just one answer, but fewer than infinitely many answers. Two x squared minus x plus one equals four. In this particular case, we do not automatically have the equals zero, which means that we must create that. We would create that by subtracting four on both sides in order to get two x squared minus x minus three equals zero. I love the equals zero, but now I need to take this left-hand side and factor that. There is no greatest common factor. Since it has three terms, I would use the AC method. Using the AC method, I'm going to have a 2x minus 3 as one factor and an x plus 1 as the other factor. My next step tells me to set each factor equal to zero and solve that new equation. So we would have one of our solutions apparently being x equals three over two. 
and the other one x equals negative 1. Again, you are welcome to go back with the assistance of your calculator possibly to check and make sure that each of these does in fact work. The worst case scenario would be if we had a very unusual looking problem. This one does not appear as the others did. However, again, my steps tell me very clearly what to do. My first goal is to create the equal zero, which means that in this particular case, I would want to subtract on both sides My second step tells me that I need to factor. And this left-hand side looks very unusual. It does not look like any other factoring problem that I've ever encountered. So I am a bit confounded here until I realize, possibly even reading it to myself for help, x plus 2 times x plus 1, followed by a minus 20. Well, that's not a usual factoring problem. Maybe it would be helpful to do the multiplication x plus 2 times x plus 1. So using FOIL, and then combining like terms, And apparently now I have a more familiar looking problem that I have seen in my factoring practice previously. I have three terms. There is no greatest common factor, so I would begin immediately trying my AC method. And my AC method would provide x plus 6 times x minus 3. I move on to my next step. Set each factor equal to 0. We seem to be getting two answers. We can then go through and check each by going back to the original problem. And we would want to make sure we go back to the original problem since that is the one that is guaranteed not to have any mistakes whatsoever. And if we walk our way through this, everything will check out in that particular case. And then if we check the other possible solution in our equation, we will find that that will also work out to be correct. And so we do in fact have, again, a second answer. Anytime that we have an equation where the highest power is larger than 1. This is the approach that we would want to take, and for now, this is the only other way of trying to solve these more complicated equations. In the future, you will likely see other ways of attempting to solve these problems that have a power of 2 or greater. But for right now, factoring is the only way that we have of working through them.